What is up? It is Thursday night, 8 o'clock, 8.30, something like that. So it's time for another Thursday night grind. Tonight we're going to be doing a chef knife, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So uh, the, the kitchen knives are hot again, um, but I like to try to just keep adding new stuff to this series of the Thursday night grind. We're on episode 18 right now, which is just outstanding. Um, but the, I'm going to be doing it on the work sharp, and there's a couple reasons for that. The first reason is something that I've seen in the sharpening community, and I'm guilty of it too, I acknowledge that, is that we, we, um, we sharpeners, we find our system and then uh, we, we get a little prejudiced about all the others. And um, like, like if you're not sharpening my way, then you're not doing it the right way. And like, I've gone there too, you know, so I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be very open and honest. And what brings that up is uh, somebody reached out to me, two people actually today. Uh, one guy was calling about bandsaw blades for a, 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 a sawmill, which is great. Like there's a whole nother opportunity in the sharpening domain to jump into, which I'm not in. Uh, but he was, he was really amped about the TSPROF, TSPROF. I don't know. It's that one out of the uh, Russia, I think. Um, but like, um, he was like, yeah, like that's the best one. I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I kind of like my system, but I, you know, I don't, I don't need to, uh, I don't, I, I don't need to be judging other people for that. That's what I love about it. Like there's so many ways to do it. Uh, and we'll get into another way and why i I have this way to share with you. Uh, but the other one was someone reached out to me about the, uh, the chef's choice, it's the one where you, it's like the kitchen thing. It has like two spinning wheel, you know, different grids. You pull them through a few times. Like, yeah, yeah. So I guess where I've settled on this and what I'm going to share with you is uh, there is no best way to sharpen uh, or the best way to sharpen is whatever way works best for you. And you could either be a professional sharpener or you could be the person at home who just wants to take care of your own knives. Like if you find a system that works for you, that's what's best. So I'm trying to I'm trying to keep that um, mentality as I share, like as people ask or otherwise share their thoughts around sharpening systems. The way the what I've I, and the other thing is like I'm looking for better ways. Uh, so the the system that I have now, where I take a knife, I, I cut a bevel on the one by thirty, usually around a two twenty grit belt. Um, and then I go to the Edge Pro and I work through three stones on the Edge Pro. I feel like I can I can rapidly get past the knives that either damaged or otherwise need work. I can do that real quick. And then on, on the one by 30, and then I can get like, I, I'm going to make an argument here, like the highest degree of precision on the bevel on both. Like I can do that on the Edge Pro. And I'm looking at the TS Prof and like, yeah. Like you, you can probably get a comparable level of precision on the bevel with the TS prof. Um, but like there's, there's like screws and stuff. Like, I don't know. Like I feel like with a little bit of handwork and, and it's just a little bit of experience, you, you're not messing with screwdrivers and like teeny screws and stuff. And like, there's, there's, no, there's no, I don't know. Like it, um, I'm not sold, right? Like that's it. Like I, I think that a lot of people use it and they love it, and they say this is the best thing. I have the Wicked Edge, I have the KME, I have the Edge Pro, and I love the TS Pro, and I think that's awesome. Like that means that you've you've done your due diligence, you've checked them all out. The other thing is that the 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 model that I think I've I've settled on for the time being is relatively affordable. I think it dials in around 550 bucks between the belt sander and like the full kit with the Edge Pro. Um, I think the TS Prof alone sells for about that. Um, but still, I acknowledge like, fi like uh, the other thing that we're, we're gonna segue into here is like the, the, the angle that I'm moving my sharpening business into is to help other people start sharpening businesses. And if you look at $550 as an investment to start a business in the scheme of things, it's approximately nothing, right? If you like, you know, if you're like the MBA was like going to go like start a restaurant, right? Like 550 bucks, like nothing. But that's like for people like me and you who want to start a business, like 550 bucks can be real money. So I, with that in mind, as I, I built a few systems that I, I 
you know, preach, I guess, is like good systems to, that you can get, get started with. Um, I, I feel like the best one for the money is the WorkSharp. Um, and that, like, I need to caveat that a little bit because I really like uh, the attachments. This is the thing that comes on the, the you know, this, the WorkSharp Ken Onion Edition thing. And if you buy just the other WorkSharp thing, it has something that's very much like this. Uh, this I'm not wicked amped about. And the issue is two things. One is on one face of the knife, it is an edge trailing stroke. And on the other edge, it's, it's an edge leading stroke. And you just can't get around that. The other thing is it does have this little guide that, uh, you, that the knife rides on right here. Like, so you set your knife there. So it's, it's a little bit hard to pay attention to the heel. And then once you get out to the tip, like it gets a little weird too. I think that like with the same amount of handwork that I've dedicated to working the edge pro, like with the same amount of handwork, you could, you could figure this out. I just haven't been motivated to put the time and energy into that. But I, I'm saying that between the, I think that this is a nice balance with the coarse belts. You can bring, uh, you know, a damaged knife to some degree back. Like when you get those big chips, man, you're like, I don't know, you'll probably be tearing through belts. It's a lot nicer to do them on the one by 30, put a 60 grit on the one by 30 and like get that quarter inch of steel back so that you can then go cut a nice bevel with a, a 120 or a 240 or 220 belt on the on the one by 30 but still like for just like the standard you know like uh henkel's knives that have not been sharpened in a decade like they're okay like there's no big chips but the bevel's just totally gone and needs to be recut like i think with the the coarse grit belt on the work sharp you can get there um but what we're i'm going to show you I'll, I'll bring you down to the bench here in a minute but they also made this uh blade grinding attachment same motor same housing and everything uh, the blade grinding attachment, this this is what I'm actually a little bit amped about, uh, which is an additional cost if you're buying the WorkSharp. But like you get like the equivalent, like it's just a little teeny one, you know, the same sort of one by 30 effect you get here. You get a platen. Uh, they, they left the top here. If you need to do any rounded work, you can do that. But then I'll show you when I do the knife, but like they have, you, they have a guide here. You can set this angle. So I have it set at 21 degrees now, which is what I'm going to do this chef knife at so it's still a lot of hand work like it's going to take practice to get good and you're at this it's not the same degree of precision that i think that you get out of the edge pro uh the other advantage is like you now you're doing belts so if you're not paying attention you could heat the steel uh yeah uh, like that's the advantage of a wet of, of a wet sharpening system is you don't put the heat in it so like you know that's the thing man like nothing's perfect nothing's perfect like that's what i love about it there's all these different ways to do things um but anyway so there's there this is this is what i like if you're if you're gonna like consider like bare bones let's get in the game uh i think this is the place to go you're you're i think we're down to i think this this thing with this is probably like 130 like go check i don't know 130 and then it's another another little bit of money for this and then you got to buy new belts these are not the same belt as what's on the other rig uh, but then once you're in like the other thing about this that i really like is that it you can you can also invest in the uh, so that's the blade grinding attachment this is the tool grinding attachment tool grinding attachment uses the same belts as the the, the other piece uh, but I, you've seen me use this, use this one a lot. If you go check out like the um, uh, pruners, loppers, axes, I, I love this thing. Like I'm surprised this thing isn't more popular. It's, it's the cat's meow. Like this thing has made its money back between pruners and loppers time and time again. Uh, but I don't see anyone really preaching the, how great this is. Some other companies like Grizzly makes a tool that pretty much is just this, but it's still not quite as good because I, I, I don't have one, but I don't think that they have um, paid as much attention to having a, a platen and a slack belt feature on that tool. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should go back and check. If you use one, please let me know uh, if you like it. Before I forget, like there's some learning stuff here that I, I wanted to uh, make sure I tell you about if you ever want to do this. Uh, I'm going to keep you in the headshot. We'll go grind here in a minute. But uh, this piece, 
this piece comes off, like it's it's not the same as the one for the uh, the tool grinding attachment. What's on there is the one for the blade grinding attachment. It looks the same. It's not the same. I I didn't replace. I've been using the tool grinding attachment quite a bit. Uh, I put the blade grinding attachment on. I was like, yeah, it's probably just the same thing. It's not, and it tore up the belts. Um, it's. I'm not going to take it off. Trust me, it's not the same. Uh, if you have all this gear, make sure you you uh, you know that. The other mistake I made when I got started on this was uh, you can set the angle using this this little humdinger here. Uh, I didn't tighten that up enough. So what would happen is while I was you know running a knife across here, it was pushing pushing this pulley down and changing my angle. And I was like, what? And then I ended up looking in here and I was like at 30 degrees. Like, yeah, no kidding, man. Like that, uh, whoops, you know? Okay, so those are like my two big lessons learned on this rig. Um, okay, is that enough chatter? I feel like that got a little bit um, uh, ideology, concept, like different sites, sorts of gear, right? Like. Hopefully you're getting a little bit of value out of this if you're interested in sharpening or starting a business. If that's you, please hit the subscribe and the thumbs up button. Um, and I will say that when people ask me like, hey, like I'm just a, I just have like a house and a farm like, and I kind of want to get into sharpening my own gear, I, I, I can't help but point them towards the workshop. All right, so let me, uh, let me grunt what we got here. We have a Wustoff. 8 inch chef. Um, I have, yeah, like I was saying, kitchen kitchen knives are back. Like we, it's cyclical. It's awesome. Sue, so, let me bring you down to the bench here. I got to turn on my other light. And I'm going to set you up a little bit. Sorry. How's that? You see that all right? I got to do this. All right, you do need power too right which is uh either doesn't matter or it does there's a little setting here to control the speed um in case this here let's just do it Can you still hear me and then there's a knob over here for adjusting the tracking uh, on here that's pretty nice right there something like this so you set your blade here you come up to here Angle. At first, I thought that was a little gimmicky. I actually kind of like it. Checking for a burr, not there yet. I can still see bright spots. I should also mention, like, I don't use this uh, a lot. This is really just me showing you. Uh, Something that I, I advertise in the um, as I'm teaching people to learn how to start sharpening, but it's not something I use a lot. So please feel free to critique my form and uh, offer me feedback or the whole community at large by doing so in the comments below. All right, starting to get a burr. Not everywhere though. So we got to do a couple more. I imagine once you're good at this, you go, you move at a much faster clip than I am. Checking for the burr. Sorry if you can't see that. I feel like I should be feeling one and I'm not. Just giving it the old inspection. 
based on the visual watching it go over the belt, it looks like I should be getting one. It is not as profound as I'm expecting, but it might be there. Yeah, all right. Should be a little bit more right there. A little bit more right here. Yeah, sorry if you can't, I'm, yeah, like what for videography, right? Like I'm doing this, I'm not even showing you. And I think in their manual, they tell you like how many passes to do on each belt. Like ultimately my, you know, the rule of thumb is if you're not getting a bird, like don't move on. And I'm getting one there now. A little bit of work here by the bolster. Got it. All right, so we built the burr up. This is the coarse belt. The other thing which I'm not amped about with the uh, work sharp is they're, everybody else measures belts by numbers, and they have chosen to choose a different model, which is this, like, coarse. And then, of course, you can't read them, right? This is SF27. I don't know what that is. So I write on them. It's a little sharpie. You see that? That's right. That was extra coarse. Sorry, this one's coarse. I get it's got to compare to a you know a conventional grit, but uh, all right, here we go. Again, I'm just checking the the burr. Got a nice burr. Okay. And my other contention with this system is that there's not a. I feel like the either I haven't found them or there's not a conventional like supplier of belts, uh, and they're like they're they're not. They they cost money, man. Change the tracking a little bit, seems a little off on this belt. Good. This must be a medium belt now. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. You move up in grit, more speed, less pressure. Fine. Let's go a little faster on this belt. Other way.
do the uh, gratuitous cut check here on some fine paper. The other thing, that, the one other thing that I like about this system I have, you know, or the Edge Pro is that uh, it's a little easier to cut the burr off. I mean, that's fine, right? Yeah, a little nick right there. No, oh, maybe not. Yeah, right, like that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, like that'll work. That'll get you in business. That will get you in business. What do you guys think? Good tool? You have one? Do you like it? Where does it rank on your list of favorite sharpening tools? I think it fits it fits a niche, man. Like it's the uh, a relatively low cost. It's dependable. It's built in the West Coast, like by you know people, uh, and they're proud of it. Derek's is the main the owner of the company. They make like uh, CNC drill bit sharpeners and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think it's high quality. Does a nice job. Gets you in the game. One thing that isn't spoken about with this is air quality. And I'm, I can feel it a little bit just grinding in here right now. And that's why I'm pretty uh, adamant about getting the dust collection set up on the one by 30. Um, and like, yeah, like it, it, it wouldn't be good to be breathing this stuff in a lot. Um, and that's, I don't see anyone talking about uh, air quality with the WorkSharp system you, and with any of it. Um, and if you were doing a lot of, I guess if you're doing like a, like a few knives, like, you know, you're, your risk is relatively low, but you're doing doing it for hire. I would say you need to put on a mask or set up a vacuum or something like that. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Remember to like, subscribe, tune in every Thursday night, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Love y'all.